Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, I have done so far two episodes in a multi-part mini-series on package managers that are available for C++. In the first episode, I covered Conan, which had a slight disadvantage because it was the first time I had ever used a package manager for C++ and I was starting with a project that was completely untested, a project that I had never tried to use before, and um, some sample code for the format library. And now for review, what I mean by the format library is this one right here, format lib, fmt lib slash fmt. And I have a very, very straightforward, teeny tiny little example that I'm using to simply format the number 42 and write that out to the console. And I'm sure there are a million ways to use this library, but that's not the point. The point is to get the include headers and the library working correctly. One reason I chose this particular library is that it is supported out of the box in all of the package managers that I was planning to cover. Now, the second package manager that I covered was Hunter, and I got that working without much difficulty, and it had a definite advantage that I had already had some experience with the package manager since I was using Conan in the very first one, and I had then made my format CPP file into something that actually worked. So now for the final package manager that I am planning to make an episode about at the moment until I'm made aware of others that need to be covered is the one that is from Microsoft. And this is the VC package. And I mean, this is kind of crazy. This is an open source project from Microsoft that was originally written as a package management tool for Visual Studio, but now supports Linux and Mac OS. And just to keep with the craziness, it is designed for working with CMake, I believe. Oh, I guess it can work with Visual Studio without CMake. So we are going to do just as we did with the other two package managers and just follow their quick start instructions and see if their instructions make sense effectively. And you know what? Let's give it a go. So I'm going to start with this cloning of this package. So I have cloned it, and then according to the instructions, I believe I'm supposed to run the bootstrap. Now it does not say to run it as sudo, and I am okay with that. So let's bootstrap. Oh, and it is starting by downloading CMake, which I find to be somewhat troubling and fascinating at the same time, since I already have at least one version of CMake installed, and I was already planning to use CMake and it is downloading Ninja. And I have absolutely no idea why it found GCC 6.4.1 here, but found C, uh, so that's GCC versus G++. It found two different versions of the compiler. That is strange, since my default compiler should be G++ 8, that is the one that it should have found first in my path, and then the next backup it should have found should have been the user bin G++, which is version 7.3, as you may have seen in the previous videos that I did. So it's building all kinds of things, but at least it is not doing it as root. Okay, the bootstrapping process has completed. And it has generate an executable called VC package, which as far as I can tell, includes both CMake and Ninja. At this point, I have no idea. So this says I need to hook up user-wide integration. I don't know what that means, but I did make a snapshot of my virtual machine before this, so I can roll back if I need to. We want to run, apparently, this VC package integrate install. It said I needed to be admin, but well, let's see what happens. Now I need to install a package and I want to install that FMT library that I mentioned before. So let's do that. See if that works. Okay, it has found the package. It is extracting it. It is configuring it. 
Though at no point has it told me which GCC it is actually using. But it did seem to namespace the FMT libraries here, and it told me how to actually use it. So this is good for our CMake targets. Let's just go ahead and see. Let's open a new tab. So we want to copy. Again, this is getting a bit of a cheater help because we have already set up this project before. But we want the CMake list from Hunter. I think that's probably the most compatible with what Visual Studio is doing. And we want our test file from Hunter to both come in here. And I left this open as another tab, so we don't need these Hunter things, and we don't need this, but we do need this. So this is our target link libraries, and we need to set the actual target name. And we're not using the header-only version of it, we are using the full version of it. Um, presumably this is what we need to do. So let's see if we can get this to compile. Now I noticed that there was a message after it was done building that said CMake projects should use this CMake toolchain file equals. Now if I had missed that comment I might have been in some trouble. So we're going to use a nested build folder, which is again not generally my preference, but we're trying to keep this the same for all the different package managers. And we want to do that, and we want to paste in this command, this cmake toolchain file. Presumably, this is how it meant for us to do this. Alright, um, seems to have done something. It picked up these extra target things for ZP VC PKG, and I can see that it has installed my package locally here. Now let's make this, and I'm going to do this for both equals 1 again to see exactly what it's doing. And that seemed to do pretty much the right thing. We've got, again, this iSystem include here, which strikes me as odd that this is mentioned as a system include, because I really don't want my user provided libraries to be able to generate warnings that I'm not aware of. And then it linked, it seems, to this .a file, again installed in the VC package, and we can double check the actual binary generated, which is this one. It is not doing any extra dynamic linking that we're not aware of, and it executed this number 42, printed number 42. Now, I did think that this process was a bit opaque in that we didn't get any actual um, feedback for which compiler it had chosen when it was installing the package. And I am glad, though, that I did not have to actually run VC package as sudo, and it seems to have kept everything quite local. That makes me pretty happy. So I'd say overall, again, this was a successful test. Now all three of these tests, I think it's worth repeating, they all relied on packages that already had support with their respective package managers. VC package has a pretty large database of packages that it supports. Hunter is, um, I think, maybe uh, a little bit smaller, and uh, Conan is being very rigorous to make sure that everything that goes in there, since they're pushing binaries, has been vetted correctly. So their official supported list of packages seems to be smaller, but it seems that adding packages and adding packages for other people to share with Conan might be easier than the other package managers. So there you have it. This is the third and at the moment final part of my series on package managers for C++. Expect that I may extend this in the future. So be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, check out any of the other videos linked, like this video, and leave any comments that you would like to.